Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects Hut. So today I just want to have a look at using Octane Log um, to get more information out of your scene. So let's let's have a play. So what we're going to do is we've got this lovely camera set up, we've got this lovely scene. All we want to do is we just want to go to our LUTs and then you get the option of Log 2 and Log 1. So you can get this product from the store or if you're a member of the Unlimited Library you can grab it from there. So we're going to use log2 and we're going to use the cube file. So now we can see that it's kind of like greyed out the image which is great because that looks more like what we used to see on a log image from a cinema camera. Plus you get to see the noise as well, see how, really, how good it is at clearing that up. So we will add a little bit more denoising. We do want to denoise volumes as well. And we want to see it every two seconds. So that's pretty much it for log really. Um, so it's worth putting the response then look then gamma or the look first the look sometimes first can be quite flat especially the second one so um, yeah just play with it to kind of get something that looks a bit more similar to what you've shot on a camera or something that you like the look of more so as we can see there's, there's nothing majorly blowing out and it starts to just as you can see here the curve just starts to even these hot spots out a little bit. But I might want to bring the exposure down a little bit as well. So we can retain all that information so we can do stuff in post. So what we'll do is we will now set this up so that we get the most out of it. We can just export a PNG, but then it might start breaking up if you want to do serious work to it, which we showed in our previous tutorial. So we want to just go and we want to go digital nature scene. We want to make sure it's an EXR with its DWAA compression and it needs to be roughly 16 or 32 bit, and that will give you a lot more flexibility when um, grading and getting back to normal colours. Um, and then we will have a few more passes so we'll have a reflection, transmission, AO and post-production to just just for the compositing stage did mention it on the previous video but having alpha shadows ticked stops this from happening really black areas so we don't want that because they're really hard to composite then so yeah what we'll do now is we'll render this out we'll just do 1920 yeah by 2160 so it's this square kind of image so we'll render that out and then we'll jump into After Effects so we uh, just have finished that render now let's just import it into After Effects we'll drop it into a new comp weird seeing this sort of shape and then we want to go to the extractor we want to go to create our denoise beauty first and then we'll duplicate it for the other layers so we do set 1 to ambient occlusion 1 to reflection 1 to post processing and maybe 1 for transmission. So first we need to deal with this log. So we need to make sure that we're actually in 16-bit as well. So all this compositing you can do now, um, you can do without having log, it just gives you a little bit better highlight roll-off or roll-off that we're used to seeing with video. So what we want to do now is just make sure we're down here, create a new adjustment layer and this will be just our basic 709. So there's a few ways that you can get this back to normal colours, so you can use a series of colour corrections, so like saturation, curves and that kind of thing, or you can use a LUT. Um, I actually do have a LUT already for... Um, S-Log3 which is kind of what this kind of mimics 
So that brings the whole picture back to normal colours. So we've gone from that flat look to this look. So let me just quickly show you why these, this is beneficial. So if we just go into curves and apply that to our base layer, doing this, we just get a little bit more information in like all the shadows and stuff as well. And when we lift them, they're not as noisy because they used to be in that gray level. So they're not gonna be really bad. So you've got more flexibility if you need to brighten up an image. And if you wanted our darks to be a bit darker, you can. So, so the reason we're using Octane Log is just to get that extra flexibility um, when coming to grading to make it look a bit more cinematic. Um, pretty much what ASIS does as well. So this is just probably now just multipass as we've gone through what the uh, the log look does. So we'll just add our ambient occlusion pass as well. We need to see our columns, so we want to see our modes, and we want to blend that with multiply. So I forgot to check alpha for this, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in any areas that I'm not necessarily bothered about. I don't want to keep. So they're just going to hit M on the keyboard and go subtract and subtract and then F on the keyboard and feather these out so this just gives us that extra flexibility in terms of shadows as well so we can add just a little bit more contact shadows so I'm just going to knock that down just a little bit because I don't want too much of it probably somewhere about there it's just going to bring this Rec 709 up to the top and then just turn our ambient occlusion back on um, then we're going to go for our reflection. This one we will blend with screen. So all we can see is it's just amplified all this reflections in this scene. Uh, so we just want to turn that down probably about 20. So again it just makes all the shinier areas a bit shinier which is really nice. Um, then we'll... So the post processing hasn't come through so we don't need that. So let's do our transmission layer now. So we've got this layer, we just want to add curves to it so we can add some flexible options once we've blended it. So if you use either screen or lighten for this and it helps create a little bit more colour variation and light coming through the leaves. Let's just see what screen looks like. It kind of does the whole image. We'll just go more for lighten. And then what, because we've added these curves here, we can have flexibility over just cranking it down just a tad and just popping that contrast a little bit. So as you can see, it's just adding a little bit more information in some of these areas, making it feel a bit more believable. It's also useful if you've kind of just missed the mark a little bit in terms of the transmission colour. Um, so you can go in and grade just the certain colours. So you can let some more of that or like more orange come through to make it look a bit more autumn-y. We can pull a bit more out and make it look more green. Again, you can use the other colours. You can pull, add blue and pull blue out. Pulling blue out is probably okay. And then the green is probably more about the luminance with this because it's already green. So... We've kind of, that's what it does with just blending and then we've added that contrast and then we've added some colour change and we've got that nice look of the leaves and it's just uh, on and off. We can see it's just in these areas here, just adding that little bit more extra information. So that is a nice looking render now. So it looks a lot more realistic from that log. I really do love using it to be honest. Um, it just feels a little bit nicer than just doing um, ASIS CG or... Um, rendering at 16 bit and then trying to get some of the contrast back out of the image um, it just feels nicer so hopefully you found this useful using octane log and also uh, multipass rendering and um, together to create a more fun experience when compositing catch you on the next one